This is an Ezaki oscillator that owns its name to Leo Ezaki, who in 1973 received the Nobel Prize for its discovery of the tunnel effect. This is the schematic of the oscillator. Please note that the transistor is connected in reverse, that is, the emitter is connected to positive instead of ground. In these conditions, the current will not flow through the emitter collector junction. However, everything has a limit, and if the voltage is large enough, we will get to the breakdown voltage of the transistor and the current will flow, lightening up the LED. The base of the transistor is not connected, since for this circuit we are only using the characteristics of breakdown voltage of the emitter collector junction. The voltage seen by the transistor is that of the capacitor. The capacitor charges with the current provided by the battery through the resistor. The voltage of the capacitor slowly rises until we get to the breakdown voltage of the transistor. At this point, the current circulates through the transistor and the LED lights up. The capacitor discharges and the voltage goes down again. Then the cycle repeats and this is how we get the oscillations. Here we show the values of the components that we have used in our circuit. This is the circuit on breadboard. Here we have the positive and negative. Positive rail is red and negative in blue. We can see the positive coming to the resistor. The resistor goes to the emitter of the transistor. This is the collector. Transistor base is not connected. From the collector we have the LED and the second resistor that goes to ground or negative. Here we can see the circuit oscillating. We have 11.6 volts at input. The circuit needs more than 11 volts to work. Here we can see we don't have oscillation and now the circuit is oscillating at 11.1. If we raise the voltage, the frequency goes up. The circuit can work up to, let's see, 14.5 volts. We don't have oscillation here. If we raise the voltage more, we can burn the transistor. And the frequency of oscillation depends both on the resistor and on the capacitor. A larger capacitor will give a lower frequency and vice versa and a larger resistor will lower the frequency and vice versa too. Here we have the oscilloscope connected to the terminals of the LED. Let me pause and let's see. In this point the capacitor starts char charging. The voltage is not enough to light the LED. At this point we have enough voltage and the LED lights up and the voltage in the capacitor starts to decrease because we are consuming the charge. In this point the voltage is not enough to light up the LED and the charging process of the capacitor starts again and the cycle repeats.